Hey folks, welcome back to Cougar Talk Weekly, where uh, with Cougars Bay, where we talk about some uh, pretty interesting topics that get brought up in the forums. Just some, uh, you know, guild updates and, and such that, uh, you know, if we need to give you guys in a uh, quicker mode than our podcast. Our podcast is going to be uh, up by now um, when I'm filming this, so please check it out in our YouTube channel. We have a special guest in Muscle420 that joined us in our podcast to talk about four-man content, what the uh, new update is going to look like in update 36, and you know, what are some comps and such, um, and just a little bit of a chit-chat back and forth of the new update and what is going to be new in there. So the first topic is instead of increasing house space dot 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 um some the ESO forum member Dramanoth said perhaps sauce could change the value of items. A spoon in a wall or a platform takes up the same space, i.e. one slot, which isn't entirely right. How about changing it? A monument can take up to ten slots but a spoon may be 0.01. Um, <clears throat> then people were like, no, that's not possible. No matter the size, there's still one item for the data to keep track. I agree. I, sh I think that, um, you know, that's, that's going to be the, the base set. Like there, you know, just, just keep it the way it is. There's no reason to, to do what needs to be done and, you know, adding more numbers to the mix. So, but this person that, um, uh, not a Daedra worshiper said what they should work on instead is making more items that come in stacks, groups, clusters to save slots. For example, a collection of bottles of various types like potions, drinking, perfume bottles and such, and not just put them in singles, bigger cluster plants, stacks of scrolls, stacks of pots, shelves, cup verbs that are already filled with items and not just books, bookshelves. Like if you want to get a bookshelf, um, you know, maybe <clears throat> put, um, some stuff like that. And then here's the thing that got me thinking, what if, what if you can make a furniture, uh, table that could craft furniture together? So for example, you add a bookshelf and then you add books you, you know, you would have to have the furnishing pattern for books, bookshelf, the bookshelf that you're wanting to do, and then kind of add things, you know, on top. Uh, if you want to have like a little statue in the bookshelf, you can, and that could be one item. <clears throat> Obviously that takes a lot of work, but that would be cool to have. That would be a cool feature to bring the furnishing in the ESO community go crazy. Because can you imagine a place that you can, um, and it, at first, you know, you can just do, um, three to five items you can incorporate together, but that would be cool if you could have a bookshelf and then incorporate books, incorporate, um, statues, potions, whatever, um, and have furniture that you could do that. You could create a dining room set or a living room set or a bedroom room set. Kind of like that. Um, that would be cool. So, and somebody says, I want more special slots so I can add more house gets and non-combat pets. Eight is way, way too low of a limit. I agree. I think it should be close to 15. If you're going to give us a lot of house gets in the crown store to buy, like, come on, give us more slots because like, come on, eight. For everything, not good enough. And somebody says, I've thought about the solution before. Definitely weighted items. I think she is, this person up there is correct in their assessment. Unfortunately, I had another worry too. That implementing this may hamper the work of people who like to use a lot of larger objects. I do a lot of custom buildings and use a lot of trees. I agree something desperately needs to be done about housing item slots. Something needs to be done about furnishing storage too. These two issues work in a tandem. New furnishings keep getting released, but our capacity to display or store of them never does. I have a handful of large houses, a max bank, and all the storage chests. I'm still in a situation where I'm trying to sell or give away furnishings because I don't have the capacity to hold them. 
The things I do to hold them, I'm struggling to remember where I squirreled them away. Between the warehouses and the chests, this doesn't make it for fun gameplay. I can guarantee you this is happening right now because my husband is doing it. The other day, <laughs> he's like, do you remember where I hid this stupid furnishing, luxury furnishing? And I'm like, I have no idea which house you put that in. Oh, it's a headache in itself. And I'm tr I'm over here trying to think of like what ways they could do it. Just give us more housing, please. Give us more housing. So that is the uh, pretty cool thing. The next topic is what is the most romantic location in Tamriel? Um, this place, this uh, forum person, Raviour, says just looking for ideas. And, of course, you know, you have the trolls. My top two picks is Cyrodiil and Cold Harbor. <laughs> Cold Harbor? Really? Like, do you want a death wedding? Uh, no. Um, then Mal Korga said, There are some nice spots along the northern coast of Erdogan. Many scenic bluffs that could be considered romantic. And then Theodar says, Coast of Erdogan, the Forest of Riften, or perhaps the Gold Coast. The Gold Coast has a lot of cool places that look really nice in the background. So I could see that. Um, Ravior as says, Cyrodiil indeed has the most beautiful scenery of Tamriel. Maybe I will just take her to a party between Bleakers and All's Well or the Skeleton's House on the way to Draklow. So, but the biggest thing is this Varanius Arena. In that case, there's a chapel and anvil with a nice pavilion across from it. Though this spot is apt to be interrupted by the screams of priestesses being murdered by the dark brotherhood so if you are willing to take that aside then this is a nice place there's a lot of wineries in Cyrodiil for when you just want to have a nice drink of that nerd root wine you role player go there and drink some nerd root wine and then there's a pavilion in Balfoy and overlooking the fields. It's a beautiful vista only, slightly marred by the Covenant troops burning the cross. So, yeah, no. And then this Varanus guy says, Orsinium has a lot of cool inns, a bathhouse, and scenic overlooks. If you're into that orc theme, then definitely Orsinium is the way to go. In Kovac, you could watch groups compete in the arena. Sadly, you can't get in the stands, but I think you could just watch from the gate. Um, what's the point in watching from the gate if you can't get in there? Like, and how is that romantic? Like, come on now. And then they say, Glenumbra and Ordon have some very nice beaches. That is true. For people who like long walks on the beach, Canaris Roost would, but so shrub and beseech, keep washing ashore. Vergama in the Alakir Desert and Hughesbane have some very nice rooftop views. Your valuables are substantially less likely to go missing in Vergama. Finally, you can always meet near the Lover Mundestone for a picnic. So if you're into that role playing of overlooking, taking your nice little orc date out in the streets of Tamriel, there are some very nice places to go that uh, you could, you know, do your thing. And obviously, if you want to get married, there's plenty of housing nerds out there that have the perfect chapel house for you to get married in, including cemeteries. So there we go. <clears throat> the other topic is, um, this guy says, Big Bang Traders, how do you make the majority of your gold? I've made quite a bit of gold selling the servant pages from the witches event, but I'm just wondering for like the big time people, the people who have more than 25 mil in the bank right now. What is your go-to selling strat for making gold? Note, only choose flipping if you don't acquire the stuff you sell yourself. Um, I basically, I'm the selfing, uh, selling self-acquired mats, either from farming mats and the um, mats or crafting rates so that is uh, a good thing it really depends on what your basically what your strength is in the game if you're not good at uh selling trial runs achievements gear motifs from the dlc dungeons and such then you probably don't want to pick that as your profession to go and make money like there's better people out there to do that than you so like Come on now, are you going to go to medical school 
not wanting to be a doctor and not being good at it, no. You're going to go and get that um, PhD in, you know, psychology or some shit like that that um you are better suited as so come on now don't don't go and try to get some um <clears throat> you know selling trial runs and such when you're not good at it because you're not gonna sell that many and then somebody says selling self-acquired pvp here if you are a great pvp -er, this is actually really good this goes um you know when the new set mars bomb came out a lot of PvPers sold the crap out of that set. You can make millions, 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 millions selling good PvP sets. And not only that, but PvPers, they sell the Alliance pots now for 25k a stack and PS4 and A. Those are good deals. I mean, 25k a stack, you can make a lot of money if you have a lot of AP. So that's that's good. And, you know, if you're just like me, who likes to go out in the wild, farm mats, farm writs, and such, that is the best way to do it. You really don't have to be as good to do this anyway. And, like, look, 43% of the game is doing that. So, there you go. And then, you can be a flipper. The only thing with flipping is that you need to keep up to date with the market prices for stuff. Um... Now, you can put, um, you can pick specific items in certain categories. Like, they suit, you know, if you pick this, there's certain category, flip the most, gear, motifs. You can pick that. And then, you know, you're kind of mirroring to that one category. I do this every once in a while because I was actually really good at it. I started doing this when I first started making money. And that is what I did. <clears throat> uh, what? Okay. And then it says selling dungeon readers, including monster mass pages, whatever. Um, that goes along the same on that. Uh, here is selling furniture or furniture plans. I really don't do this. I see people that do it. You can make rip vouchers and do that as well. Um, you can even sell crowns. Like, I mean, why not use your actual money and sell crowns to get in-game money? It you know whatever and this guy says i simply play the game i don't specifically farm anything i mostly do vet dungeons and trials get a ton of Maltese patterns and i just sell those mats that pile up sold a bunch of kinra dagger runs for people who were farming it and sometimes sold sky reach and vrp xp grinds so this is the kind of player that will sell um <clears throat> so selling dungeon runs achievements whatever and basically these two together that's the kind of player that it is. And so this is Chinese gold farmers. Yes, there are Chinese gold farmers. Please don't become one of them. And this person says, a mix. I have days when I sell no furniture at all, but some motif pages or overlaying gear. Another day, furniture. Then I see items streaming cheap. Can't resist to flip those. I rarely sell mats with 72 characters. I need them all to myself. In addition to those common, I also do rarer sales now. Like a Timber Crow Wonder costume here and there. Other sources are buying for Alliance Pots, selling, you know, for, or Telvar selling for gold. It's kind of a mix. So this person does a mix. And this person says, I only have like 3 mil now, but at some point I had over 25 mil. And my thing was a glyph trader. I would sell up to 60 glyphs a day, like 7 to 9k each. These are PC prices, guys. PC, PC, PC prices right here. Um, only thing I ever do. Uh, I ever had to buy was stacks of CUDA and Rakora when stocks got low, which CUDAs are super cheap on PC. They're like 4K, same on PS4 and A. So when you make 7 to 9K a piece, that is pretty awesome. Um, and I do this as well, and you sell a lot of glyphs. <clears throat> so that is the thing. Now, the only thing I really ever spend my money on is motifs. I barely ever buy anything. I farm all mats I will ever need with rights and surveys. Just constantly making the resources up at some point. I knew every motif in the game before I stopped playing for years. I ended up selling millions for in real life money. I don't know why you would put that on the forums. Bought crowns for crown store um, and gave millions to guilds. Which I regret now as I was kicked after being inactive. Well, what do you expect? <clears throat> if you're going to be inactive, please tell your guild master that you're going to be inactive or you're going to get kicked. 
I know it's finally so bliss at and at a low price, even lower than buying a CUDA because I need some sort of passive income. And seeing as I have such an abundance of ever increasing runes that I will never use, I might as well sell them. So why not just sell the CUDAs if you're selling them for a lower price? I don't understand. Oh. Then this person is like mostly selling gold and purple upgrade mats from Daily Ritz and from Refining Mats. I sell gear, motifs, French plans. And such as well. I don't go out of my way to farm any of it though. Rarely if I ever bother flipping. I'm browsing a guild trade. And I'm looking for something I intend to buy for myself. And I just see something very underpriced. And I grab it. So I do that too. I do that too. Um, this guy says. Don't really save gold anymore. Since been around since the start. Don't join guilds. So weekly fees and such. At a certain point when I play an MMO. So long gold becomes useless. Especially if you enjoy crafting your own stuff. Um, yeah, I guess. <clears throat> so, do Ritz, collect surveys, sell gold tempers. This is the way. Yes! This is the way, as the Mandalorian. This is the best way to make money in this game. Do Ritz, collect silvers, uh, collect surveys, sell your shit. If you want, that is the best thing. And this one says, I use ESO as a place to rest chilling solo and pv explorable i'm mostly just wandering around based on my mood harvesting all resources in sight and i use those for trading that is the other activity i enjoy in this game it makes me earn by far more gold than what i need so i give most of it to support my guild that's pretty awesome you support your guild yes that is pretty awesome if you have more than enough you know support the guilds that are helping you become you know the player that you are so there you go <clears throat> let me see if i can find somebody no no that's pretty much it so all these people i don't know about the others that posted uh flipping or whatever so yeah there you go and then there's this standard and standardized daily reset please so in update 36 you know, the reset time changes and depending on the server and region as opposed to universal reset from before. People want to change this. Uh, hell no. Just keep it the same way it is. Like, come on now. They don't need to be reset a specific time based on your schedule. If you really have um, a problem with your schedule, then you need to make... Uh, changes to your schedule to fit your game if you can't do that then stop bitching about it like get better and somebody says what's something you took for granted and now miss is <clears throat> this like no regrets a character being able to accomplish achievements so like that's yeah i guess i guess of uh, the old animations for jabs and flurry don't like the new ones class identity yes that is something that i absolutely like i absolutely miss um <clears throat> boss myself <laughs> this is a character being able to accomplish yeah i mean i guess but i really like what the new character's achievement is there overlord third bard that's actually a thing i miss the old cp tree and the old vampire skill lines i, I really do too i wish we could go back but I like the new one too, so I mean it's, you know, it is, it is what it is. And toast for the long miss overload bar. Oh my goodness. Um, I sort of missed the pre one Tamriel days. I did enjoy having leveled zones and the work I had to put in to unlock the other zones. I prefer how the materials was handled back then too. You would get whatever was around the level and zone instead of a 50-50 split between player level and crafting level. The only problem is that the zones that had the higher level, you would have to freaking fight with people to farm it. So this is a lot better. Believe me, I understand what you're talking about and what you're wanting. But the way it is now, it's a lot better. Puncturing seems good from a staple skill to not worth slotting. Oh my goodness. Soft cap on stats. Bring back 1.5. I miss some of the old animations. So, like, all of this is old animations and, and such. And pre-1 Tamriel. Oh, my goodness. Not back in the scene swing. Really had that oomph from 2H. You can still have that oomph. Ice Heart before it was nerfed to make Mother, Mother Snatty look better. 
So I wasn't here to actually see it in the game. The old look of the Red Guard light chest armor. I don't remember that. But, yeah. <laughs> High metabolism. Not being tired at all. The time. H is a hell of a drug. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Server performance in Cyrano. It's gotten a lot better. Stop bitching, PC players. Like, well, I don't know if this guy's a PC player. If you're not, I'm sorry. But if you are, like, stop bitching. You guys got a server performance upgrade. We still have to wait for ours in Xbox and PS4. So, like, come on now. Come on now. Individual achievements from my many alts and jabs. Like, I understand, guys. But, like, overall, this is better because this creates, you know, um... It makes people want to play other classes. For example, this is this is just an example. I I could say I want to play my necro because you know that's my main, and I want to get the title of my main. Okay, that's fine, but we need you to DDK. Like. That really sucks, because you would have to pick, basically pick between being a selfish fuck and the team. And, you know, most of the time people are going to pick team, so why not be team friendly while still getting the achievement that you need, or the title that you need on your account as well? It's it's a double-edged sword, guys. Like, it's, it's good for the community. I like it. It makes the comps so much easier to put together it's less stress on people that are doing achievement hunting so come on now stop it stop it i don't want it to go back to the way it was the old wrecking blow Ah, uh, come on now you know what i miss in eso <clears throat> i miss the game actually be playable in pvp and like just PvP being playable at all. It's not right now. At least not on PlayStation, console, Xbox, whatever. I hear other things on PC, which that's fine. If that ever comes to place, then yeah. PvP being playable. That's what I miss in this game. And with that, I'm just going to call it here. Make sure you guys check our Patreon. Because who loves our Patreon more than us? you and make sure you guys check our cougar city boosters in discord that is boss style cougars base score music x reading x and merc 271 and we have a bunch of teams you can join if you're into the team mentality if you're not we do have weekly traders that you can um basically have and we do have tales of tribute tournaments so there you go Thank you guys for watching and make sure you guys check our social medias and have a great day. Holla holla.